The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us this morning. For, before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist, and our very special guest from Mercy Medical Center, Dr. Maurice Chung, Director of Mercy Center of Endometriosis, Pelvic Pain, and Urogynecology. Good morning, Doctor, and welcome back to the show. Good morning. Glad to be back. All right. Well, researchers are not sure exactly how many women in the United States have chronic pelvic pain because it's often linked to other disorders, such as endometriosis, chronic pelvic pain, and it may be misdiagnosed as another condition, making it difficult to estimate reliable prevalence rates for pelvic pain. According to one study, about 15% of women in childbearing age in the United States have reported pelvic pain in the last six months. This morning, we're going to talk with Dr. Chung about these symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, and what we can do to help patients with chronic pelvic pain. We'd like to remind our listeners today that this program is available on our podcast, which can be downloaded from the App Store on your mobile phone. Just look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anywhere you go. You can post any other questions you might have up on our live Facebook feed, and we'd be happy to help you with your questions. So, Dr. Chung, give us a review about your practice and what you do. Um, I am a urogynecologist. And um, I was uh, trained as an OBGYN, and you need special training and uh, <clears throat> examination, uh, three extra year uh, to be a urogynecologist. And what we do usually is for the women's health uh, with uh, pelvic floor dysfunction, which means that the organ in the pelvis, they are not holding well. Some of them, they fall out. Some of them have urinary leaking. They could not make it to the bathroom when they have the urgency to move, I mean, to move the bowel or um, the urge to go urinate, then they wet the pants. So just exactly what is a urogynecologist? Uro-neo-gynecologist. Is that word Euro, correct? Do they have this spelled right? I think it's in, on Euro here, gyno- urogynecologist. Oh, gotcha. Euro. Okay, gotcha. Right. Euro, like urine. Long Euro. word. Long word. Long word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's like a, a blend between the urologist and gynecologist, and yeah. we're dealing with uh, leaking bladder, uh, leaking yeah. stool, and uh, and pelvic pain in many of us. Okay. All right. So you mentioned. Um, why don't we talk about some of your specialties at Mercy Medical Center? Because it sounds like before the show we talked about some things, and you have. A lot of patients seeking you out for your expertise. So why don't you talk about some of the things you specialize in at Mercy? Um, besides the urogynecology, which is treating the pelvic organ prolapse, let's say for women, it's the womb, uh, the vaginal uh, tissues, they f- fall out, and leaking bladder that they got to go to the bathroom and they cannot make it there. And another one that is Probably one of my fifty percent of my patients have that problem is pain, and they have pain below the belly button, and anything down below, it hurts. They have pain with uh, sexual intimacy in the course. Um, the bladder hurts, the muscle hurt, and anything hurt. The sitting hurt. So this is something I would with my specialty. And um, they hurt a lot, and they have been to so many doctors and over doctors, have surgery after surgery, they are not getting better. Is that what chronic pain, chronic pelvic pain disorder is? Yeah. In general? In general, chronic pelvic pain is anything, any pain below the umbilicus, the belly button, and lasts for more than three months. It's constant. (laughs) And it can just start. No, no, apparent. No, for one, nope. No, not necessarily an injury, not necessarily uh, just begins. And it just began. There's like, there's a sentinel event that started, but sometimes it's so difficult to find out what started it. It could be a remote injury and they just have some fall again or they started some exercise and then stir up some muscle and nerve 
and they start over again, and it started to hurt. So we're talking nagging pain or sharp pain or, or all of above, all the above? All of the above. Okay. All of the above. So it doesn't particularly mimic any one particular yeah. type of pain. It's just right. pain. Well, pain in general is yeah. pain. Sure. But then when it's a little bit better, patient will tell you, I am sore. And some will tell you that I'm so bloated, I'm tender. Um, mm. And it just pressure. So there's a variety. It's up to me to sort out how bad is it. And um, pain. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. So, how about symptoms? If if there's such a thing for pain, I mean, it, it, it starts slow, or starts um, like right now, bang. It could be, bang, and it could be they had it before, it went away, and then it came back, and they just keep going and get worse and worse and worse, and it just it, it come in all forms, and some could be very sharp, some could be dull. Some could be sitting, make them hurt so much, standing, they could not sit the whole day. They have to stand up, walk around. If they sit down, they start hurting. Lying down, get some better, but some patient lying down, the back hurt. So you see how they go? The younger patient, and before they, they still have the menstrual cycle, and those with the menstrual cycle, it hurts so much more. And then when the cycle is stopped, they hurt less, but they still hurt. And so those were the patients turned into endometriosis by gynecologist. But then for the one that stopped having period, um, they menopause, then they still have those pain. Sometimes not as bad, but then, you know, as one gets older, they move around, they cannot move around there very well, that back hurt, and they turn that into back pain. And then they will seek out physical therapists or pain management, which is not always the case, you know. So... Risk factors? Are there any risk factors developing chronic pelvic pain? Um, that's a very interesting question. Risk factor. Endometriosis, there's genetic. Blood pain, there's genetic. And nerve pain, there's genetic. But how does the nerve pain have genetic? But some recent studies show that women with chronic pain and without chronic pain, and when you perform these uh, uh, vascular MRI and check out the brain, those who have chronic pain with or without endometriosis versus those who have with or without endometriosis without chronic pain, there is certain neuron is missing in the midbrain. The gray matter was missing. And so we thought that this gray matter actually is are the filter so how do we find out those patients in the large population? And so are we dealing with neurochemical issues? So there are certain patients that have chronic pain, just like you injure yourself a long time ago, all of a sudden you have a starter trigger, and that trigger will trigger that group of patients. They have a lot more pain than the one without that uh, um, neuron that's missing. So what can what can uh, our listeners do uh, having chronic pain to lower their chances or, or of ever developing it? Don't take narcotics. <laughs> That's all it is, because because ninety percent of those pain, if you can find out where that is, you can help, and I can help. And once you get on narcotic, it's just so difficult for me to turn it around. Yes, it could be, but... If, they, if they're on it. If they're on yeah, it. Yeah, if yeah. they're not on it, well, okay, yeah. to just try it occasionally. And I don't even use narcotics. And yeah. the bulk of my patient, I pretty much can promise that 80 to 90% of them, after I evaluate them for about three months to six months, they would be at least 50% better mm -hmm. without narcotics on sometimes not major surgery. Interesting. Yeah. How common, uh, you know, endometriosis, is it on the rise or not? Well, endometriosis has always been there. And um, so for OBGYN, endometriosis is one of those conditions that cause chronic pain. Mm -hmm. um, but they are cyclic, okay, which means that you have your period, you hurt. Without the period, you shouldn't. But when you get to without the period, it started to hurt. That is not just endometriosis anymore. So uh, how common is that? 
they are probably close to more than 10 million, 20 million patients mm-hmm. have endometriosis. Mm-hmm. But that's an underestimate. But endometriosis is the same. Why is this woman have so much cramps and pain and the other one doesn't? Is it just endometriosis? Sometime when I do surgery, I couldn't find endometriosis. So that made me think that my approach in the last, in all the training that I had, it should be just turn around and we should not be treating uh, endometriosis with surgery first. There are some other condition. However, you have to treat endometriosis with surgery because you have to remove them. Mm. And that's very common and underestimated the endometriosis because many parents, when the kids started to have cram, they, they bring them to the pediatrician and they'll just give them some Motrin or something, but they don't diagnose endometriosis until they see the OBGYN. Okay, it's time for a break. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Hot by Store in Louisville. Just in, an entire drugstore inventory with lots of good stuff. Toys, electronics, cell phone accessories, women and girls Levi's, beach towels, and best of all, Starbucks coffee. Toys, lots on sale. We have to sell all remaining furniture inventory drastically reduced to add space for incoming merchandise. Also, many final reductions around the Half Off and Hot Buy store next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. Don't miss this sale. You'll regret it. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Men like Paul White love Studio Arts and Glass. Why? We wrap all of his gifts. Gifts like hand-blown paper whites, ornaments, jewelry, and stunning sterling silver and precious stones like amethyst and crystals. After 30 years, Studio Arts and Glass is known for creating and restoring stunning stained glass. Just ask Paul White. Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. A locally owned Health Mart pharmacy, whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local Medicine Center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are talking with Dr. Maurice Chung, Director of Mercy Center of Endometriosis, Pelvic Pain, and Urogynecology. Have a question posted on our live Facebook feed. Okay, doctor, we've been talking about um, all things uh, pelvic pain this morning. What about men? Can men have pelvic pain? Absolutely. And um, now, have you heard those... Uh, bike rider oh. okay so they're riding bicycle and then they hurt and then that's easy because men all the reproductive organs are external so it's easy for the uh, doctor to diagnose whether this is neuromuscular nerve pain 
And men have urgency of frequency. When they get, you know, when you get to about 40s and when you see urologists, that turn into the prostate that get bigger. And they say, well, you have urgency, frequency, and discomfort. And the blood that starts filling up, it hurts. So it's your prostate. And you get, uh, um, you know, terps. They go in and scrape out some of the prostate tissues, open up the urethra. However, and that's a surgical uh, treatment. Now, besides the medication was used. So, again, that group of patients of the surgery, they may still have urgency, frequency, and discomfort, and the prostate already partially resected, removed, but that's the group of patients, again, suffering and without being treated for the bladder pain syndrome or mm. pudendal nerve dysfunction. So what kind of therapies or medications and surgical procedures are used to treat aspects of pelvic pain disorder? Well, if we talk about women, and you have to treat the woman or her symptom. And number one, when you have pelvic pain, invariably the woman may have bladder pain because even though if they don't have urgency frequency, then the bladder still hurt on examination. And, you know, blood, blood is the low abdomen. For them, they would just think this is my reproductive organ pain, right? Mm. So you, we have to approach and evaluate the bladder, and I have to approach to evaluate the muscle and nerve because the entire pelvis, there are muscles, and there are vagina tissues, there are nerves that can cause pain. And besides, mm. we miss the big organ there, which is bowel. And bowel, with those who have irritable bowel constipation, when the nerve is stimulated, this nerve will agitate the other neighbor, which are the organ we just talked about. So it's all of the above. Hmm. So it's really all interconnected. It is connected. And one, can, one tissue can probably inflame and irritate and heighten the painful awareness of another tissue, and round we go. Yeah, exactly. How about I give you a good analogy? For example, I have this pelvis, and in there, I have properties. Just like you are in a residential area, you have houses, right? Let's say you're living in the house of the uterus, and your neighbor is the bladder, bowel, muscle, nerve, bone. Let's say the uterus house, your womb, catch fire. When it burns, your neighbor house is gonna catch fire. Left, right, behind, front, and guess what? That turned into inferno, right? So that means that patient have a bad pelvic pain. And would it just be just one house catch fire and the other don't? Yes, sometimes this one catch fire, the other one, and the third one, not the second or the fourth. So you gotta think about that. And when you evaluate the pelvis, it's all the area involved. So one house catch fire, you leave him alone, you do not treat it, everything catch fire. So you've kind of described this as something that's kind of a dull thumping pain or a dull pain that's always there. How does that, how does a patient handle that mentally and, and deal with their outlook for their day if they have, if they're a busy mother and trying to run their household and go to work and get the kids to soccer. And I, I'm guessing that there's a pretty big cascade for how this all yeah. comes crashing down. Well, and you, you mentioned many of those patients suffer, but these are something that they don't talk about. And some of those would tell me at the end of the treatment, well, I'm just a normal mom. I cannot take my children to soccer game because of the pain. I could not even tie my shoes because of the pain I cannot bend over and not hurting. And after three months, I became a new woman again. I could take my kid to go to uh, have all these uh, activities and I could tie my shoes. <laughs> and another one would say, well, ever since after I have my childbirth and I have pain with intimacy, have sex, so painful that I ignore my husband for two years. And I've seen so many doctors Nothing could help, and they start crying. Hmm. Then, what a wonderful feeling within three months, 
less than three months, they turn around and 80% of the pain is gone. <laughs> Think about it. It's a big implication. It affects the entire family and the children. And like yesterday, I asked the kid that came in with the mom, and mom was smiling. The kid was smiling. He said, hey, your mom is much happier. And she said, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, you know, it, pain that pain influences your entire body. Your, you, you know, your thinking. Your, you, you know, your ability right. to relax. Your, you, you know, whatever to sit still or, or, you know, the whole thing. So, when you don't fix fix the pain, I mean, you, you know, we have all these hemp products out there now, and all this. Where do you see this stuff? Um. Herbal medicine helped some, but as I said, every little bit help. But I cautious anyone before they make the right proper diagnosis and treatment by those who focus on the pelvic pain treatment before they get on these herbal supplements. And I'm not saying it's not working, but if it's working through the traditional with proper management then you don't need to use any supplement and once you hook on to that you don't you know get rid of it very interesting um what about chronic pelvic pain what muscle pain associated with it we've got muscle tissue in that around that area oh yeah there are much mu multiple muscles in there those muscles uh when they are functioning normally they're holding all the organs up the uterus up the bladder up and the muscle uh contraction and relaxation and sometime control the urinary function. So let's say that patient had a fall uh, when she was 15, okay? Yeah. It's not really hurting, it's just enough to hurt her tailbone. So the tailbone is sacrum, have so many nerves in it. And this nerve is not just in the butt, the front part of the nerve is all the muscles. So yeah. you hurt the back, the nerve in the muscle start agitated because the house burn in the back is gonna to burn to the front. Now the muscle is involved. Just say this patient had a childbirth and the baby comes through the vaginal canal and it stretches some of the muscle, some of the nerve, stretch the blood a little bit, boom. Six months after the childbirth and she started to have pelvic pain. So the muscle is the integrated component and the physical therapist actually a very good therapy for these patients to take care of the muscle component of the chronic pelvic pain. And in Mercy, and I have met with some other uh, physical therapy uh, in the region, and I think there are a couple of them uh, work very well in the female pelvic floor, but just with the physical therapist doesn't cut it. You have to work on all the other component because it's not just one. Again, remember the entire neighborhood. Okay. Um, it is the bottom of the hour. Time for the news. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. Men like Paul White love studio arts and glass. Why? 
We wrap all of his gifts. Gifts like hand-blown paperweights, ornaments, jewelry, and stunning sterling silver and precious stones like amethyst and crystals. After 30 years, Studio Arts and Glass is known for creating and restoring stunning stained glass. Just ask Paul White. Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Hot by Store in Louisville. Just in, an entire drugstore inventory with lots of good stuff. Toys, electronics, cell phone accessories, women and girls Levi's, beach towels, and best of all, Starbucks coffee. Toys, lots on sale. We have to sell all remaining furniture inventory drastically reduced to add space for incoming merchandise. Also, many final reductions around the Half Off and Hot by Store next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. Don't miss this sale. You'll regret it. Incontinence. Nobody wants to talk about it, but many people have to deal with it. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacies. We recently made a large purchase of underpads and adult diapers. Many brands are now in stock and all at half price. You can save many dollars by purchasing these incontinence products at the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. We also have compression hosiery. Many brands in stock and all at gigantic savings. Stop in the Medicine Center Pharmacies and save on all your health care needs. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today, Brad and I are discussing chronic pelvic pain. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. Where are we at? Well, I guess I just uh, want to thank people for joining us for our program today. And it sounds to me like with everything Dr. Chung has talked about, if you're having chronic pelvic pain or pain below the belly button, whether you're a man or a woman, he has some solutions that can help you live a more comfortable life. So I think that's exciting. And hopefully if you need more information, how do patients get in touch with you? Can they see you directly or do they need a referral from their primary care physician? What's the protocol these days? I have an open, open border policy. <laughs> <laughs> people, Wait a minute. I know, I'm just saying. I mean, I mean that you can knock at the door and come right in and then make an appointment. I mean, I mean that. So there's not a lot of red tape? No, no red tape. All just right. walk right through and I'll give you an appointment and, um, before I'm getting too, too busy, you know. Okay. Okay, so how about vaginal pain? Do women in, in chronic pelvic pain disorder have vaginal pain? Well, you, you, you raise another good question. What is a pelvic pain? What is a vaginal pain? What is a bladder pain? What is a pelvic pain? Are we talking about the same neighborhood? It's all wrapped up there together. Exactly. Okay. So you have all the different things, which is the same, essentially the same. And to go into that means that I'm teasing out this is vaginal pain. This is the, quote, vulvodynia, vestibulitis, the vaginal opening pain, and the Deep pain, which is during sex, and they hurt deep inside, and with the menstrual cycle, they hurt a lot more, that becomes endometriosis. And patients with bladder pain, what are the symptoms? They have urgency, they don't feel they emptied after they pee for a little bit, then go back to pee again within 10, 15 minutes. And when the bladder starts to fill up with urine, and they hurt. So that turned into painful bladder syndrome. But if that hurts so much, the signal is not go it's gonna go to the muscles and nerve, and that becomes a pelvic pain. But let's say a woman, how do we know where is it? Painful pelvis to them, oh, it's in my uterus. But actually, I found that it was in the bladder and all the other tissues. The vaginal opening and is part of the nerve that contributes to the pain. So it is the neighborhood, let me put it this way. I think we talked about this earlier that um Chronic pelvic pain um, can worsen during the menstrual cycle. Right. Okay. And that part is because of for the women that still uh, have ovarian function, they're not menopause, they have cycles. And this estrogen stimulate this nerve growth factor, make the nerve neuron more sensitive in those times. So before they even start having the menstrual cycle, then the neuron act up, they have more pain. And it doesn't matter where is the organ, it could be muscle, nerve, bladder, and then when the menstrual cycle comes, there's a uterine pain, which is the cramps. And when it's over, 
there's a residual, they are better, but they still have long-lasting symptom. But that is what it's all about because the menstrual cycle does affect the pain. And if you take away the menstrual cycle, they have a baseline discomfort. When the baseline discomfort get worse, that become pain. And when they are not that bad, oh, I just have bad cramps. Okay. Um, a question posted up here and sent to me. I'm thinking it's interesting. Any particular disease states that might make a patient more prone to having pelvic pain? I'm thinking maybe diabetes or or some type of uh, neurological condition like multiple sclerosis, would would those be related in any way, shape, or form, or would they just be maybe something that's concurrently happening? Anyone with diabetes, anyone with MS, multiple sclerosis, they can have pain. But you'll so easily be swayed into, oh, the reason why you pee a lot because you have diabetes, okay? okay? Now, multiple sclerosis, Patients have urinary urgency frequencies. Some of those have incontinence, and they have muscle spasm. Some of those don't. It comes in all form. So when you have a multiple sclerosis patient to see me, then I can just assume that all they have is because of multiple sclerosis. Maybe, but you still have to make sure all the neighborhoods are okay. That means I have to make sure the bladder, the muscle, the nerve, and I still have to check it that way. Now, if some patients have significant uh, muscle spasm for, let's say, hemiplegic, and their muscle spasm. But I still cannot assume that the pain is from muscle spasm and not from anything else. Of course, when they have the period, that will make the pain worse. That's a given. So to answer your question, maybe, yeah. but I can okay. assume. Right. Okay. I just think that's interesting to, it's amazing how many variables you have to address before you can make a confident decision on a course of action. So when you see a patient for the first time and they open, there's no red tape, an open door policy, and they come in and see you, yeah. what, what um, do you have... How, what, what kind of, what would a patient experience on their first visit? Well, I need to talk to them. I ask them whether they have surgery, uh, what are the symptoms, what make them worse, what make them better. And that's the connection because I need to understand how bad they are. And many of them, they do uh, get so depressed because of they have this for a long time. And remember, it's not because they have depression. They're depressed because of that. And then there's a group. They do have depression, anxiety. Sometimes they have bipolar disorder. And sometimes that is an issue. An issue will affect the pain. It's not that because they have anxiety, depression, and bipolar. They, these conditions make the pain worse than the other that don't have it. So once you treat the condition, they still have the bipolar depression, but they are not hurting. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and actually that explanation makes me think about how before you said that you know we're in a society that we're conditioned if you have pain mm -hmm. go seek out treatment to make the pain go away right and we've created that whole another set of problems but um with opioids and things of that nature but i'm also thinking about patients that have a lot on their plate or are depressed and their family practitioner when good faith tries to help them treat yeah. that depression but if it's related to another problem that makes your job even harder right right so we do need a good psychologist to work with this group of patients to help them to cope. And as I said, I evaluate every single organ system in the pelvis and mm -hmm. I send them to physical therapy um, in most of them. And there are some I don't because they hurt too much mm -hmm. before I send them to the PT. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've talked about nerve pain and how it's related to the neighborhood. We've talked about uh, painful intercourse. Um, and you've, you've mentioned painful urination. Is urination painful because of the pelvic floor issues or is it maybe because, is it, could it be because of recurrent UTIs? Oh, you always raise some good questions because once you ask this question, I could talk about for another two hours. And <laughs> <laughs> so you, you talk about urinary symptom. Let's say a patient come in that pee a lot every 10, 15 minutes, some of those patients that I had before 60 times a day. And if they don't go, they hurt. Once they go, they don't. 
Let's say, for example, I empty my bladder now, and immediately when I have four tablespoonful of urine gets into my bladder, it hurts. So I pee again. So peeing, urination relieves the pain. But there are some who have pelvic floor muscle dysfunction, which means they have pelvic floor muscle spasm. And then when they bladder filled up, they hurt because they have the underlying nerve pain. When they go to urinate, they have difficulty to urinate because there is muscle spasm. So it's not necessarily a, 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 an infection? No. Nope. Okay. And maybe it's triggered by the first infection. There are too many women sent by urologists or the family doctors say, this patient have urinary tract infection. Yeah. One after the other and the third one, first of all, was their culture. Many of them, they just pee in the cup. You know, it's not that easy like a man that can just aim and They'll shoot right, sure. right? And so they call that midstream clean catch. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's not easy to clean the organ in female. And second of all, it's not that easy to hold after 10 seconds and then you aim and it go right into the cup because it's dripping down. Once it drip down through the organ, you catch the bacteria. So it's almost, to me, is not usable hmm. information. Not a UTI. It's a nerve. So then we got a whole bunch of antibiotics going that and we really shouldn't have. Exactly. But the... But the woman wants relief, and the doctor... sometimes it helps the yeah. antibiotic, and sometimes mm. it doesn't. What about uh, now? We, we talked to earlier about um, um, narcotic pain relievers and, and such and such. What about the over-the-counter products? Okay, the ibuprofens and the Aleve's and some of these other products. Um, okay, I think that uh, the over-the-counter like Aleve, Motrin, mm -hmm. ibuprofen, aspirin. Okay, they are all very good for muscular pain. Sure. Okay, and for cramps, and because they block these chemical prostaglandin. But when you use too much Motrin, then you hurt your kidney. And so, what about acetaminophen, which is the Tylenol? Yeah. The Tylenol works too, but they tend to have um, work a lot better on maybe headaches, sometimes it help, help the muscle because it's more central mediated. In For us, they Tylenol help the headache better than Motrin because it works there. And if you have migraine muscle spasm, that would work. Um, not for nerve pain, really not for nerve pain. Bladder pain, it doesn't work. So, okay, many so we got the Azo products, okay? Uh, turn your urine, urine red, pain relief, uh, uh, urine, da -da. what about those guys? Yeah, those guys work a little bit. And yeah. it actually helped to um, anesthetize, numb up the uh, the urethelium. So that works some. Uh, okay. It helps. It helps. But you can't live on those like you can't live on the others. Oh, uh, no. But uh, for the bladder pain, is the diet control. Okay. Okay. No hot and spicy food. No sweet and sour. Sour, I mean. No vinegar. No apples, banana and all the citrus. Hmm. Um, why? Because Citric the acid. potassium can penetrate the lining of the bladder and irritate the nerve and set off a firestorm. Okay. And the hmm. acid is the same thing. So the bladder health is important, and many of those is just don't even know that those are the, the stuff been hurting their bladder, then they have the pain, and they have the painful sex and menstrual scram. So That's interesting. I would have thought that to some extent those products broken down before they got to the bladder. Um, apparently the citric acid and, uh, and some of the other... Acid. It depends yeah, on your body. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. It really depends on your blood body. Yeah. Okay, last break here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Hot by Store in Louisville. Just in, an entire drugstore inventory with lots of good stuff. Toys, electronics, cell phone accessories, women and girls Levi's, beach towels, and best of all, Starbucks coffee. Toys, lots on sale. We have to sell all remaining furniture inventory drastically reduced to add space for incoming merchandise. Also, many final reductions around the Half Off and Out Buy store next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. Don't miss this sale. You'll regret it. Incontinence. Nobody wants to talk about it, but many people have to deal with it. 
Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies. We recently made a large purchase of underpads and adult diapers. Many brands are now in stock and all at half price. You can save many dollars by purchasing these in condensed products at the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. We also have compression hosiery, many brands in stock, and all at gigantic savings. Stop in the Medicine Center Pharmacies and save on all your health care needs. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties, a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy. Of course we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression socks. All of our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are only $69.95. Call or stop by our local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Our final segment of the show is now coming up. All right, doctor, we've had uh, a lot of great information shared today, and I hope that listeners have been able to uh, learn some things and have some things to think about that um, if they need to seek help. But I wondered... If you'd like to give us kind of a, a, a summary of some things that you feel are really important for patients that might think they have some of these pelvic problems. Well, I would love to. The topic is just so big, right? So let me focus on two things. What is acute pain? Acute pain is you hurt yourself, let's say you fall, and then the pain's over within a couple of days. After surgery, you hurt and you get better. Now, the chronic pain is not. The chronic pain is the pathology of nervous system. So we talk about the entire nervous system. For example, why is it the entire body get involved in it? You have a party in the basement. Then you have this kid talking, having fun, talking so loud. Now, you're in, on the first floor. You have some gas there. And then, you know, all the noises will get to the first floor, and then the guests on the first floor, they have to talk louder and louder. Now you get a second floor. The entire house is so loud, the second floor guests have to speak louder so that they can hear themselves. And up there in the attic is your grandparent. If you have grandparents that are so stern and say, shut up, I cannot stand it, then everybody is quiet. Okay, and if the grandparent is so liberal, then say, hey, you have more fun, you can talk louder, then the entire house is so loud they affect the neighbor. All right, so to treat the problem is when it started, you have the nib in the butt because these nervous system symptoms will go from one neighborhood, the bladder goes to the other, the third, and then move up to your abdomen. Now you have surgery. And the surgery poke around the abdomen and create another noise. Then you get up to the chest. Oh, now I get fibromyalgia now. Then you get up to the brain. Then you get this migraine headache. So this is like it's keep moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. So if you can stop it so early, you may be able to abolish it. But once you get in the cluster, you can control it. So for our listener, all the women, that if you have any of these conditions that lasted for three to six months and you're not better, don't procrastinate. Don't have to live with it. You don't need to live with it. There are solutions. Not necessary surgery, but there are solutions to abolish it, to change your life. 
And so, I mean, it's easy to find me in the Mercy Medical Center. They have this website. They finally, after six months, it's done. And so finally, I can even find myself there. Otherwise, it would take You've got a great about. picture on there. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> and that's what it is. Um, so I hope that whatever we speak today, it helps. What about your from your culture, um, acupuncture? Yes. Um, you know, we've had numerous guests on the program right. that, that have are, are schooled and trained in, in acupuncture over the years. And, um, you know, I probably shouldn't say this, but, but, but I get a feeling that, that, that the vast amount of Americans want instant pain relief. Okay. Yeah. And, and I see the country going into a direction where, you know, we've made marijuana, I don't know if it's legal everywhere, but then, and all the substrates and all that kind of stuff are now, are now falling into the illegal patterns of, of whatever. Would you guess or would you make a claim that that, that, that the American culture um, is less tolerant to pain? I mean, look at the countries around the world. Mm, and don't want to make a generalization. Yeah. And there are a lot of tough women in our country. And even though it hurts, they don't tell you. Yeah. It's hurting, but they can cope with it. Mm -hmm. um, the same problem happened in China, Brazil. Yeah and uh, Colombia, uh, Romania, that, those are the area I travel and teach in every year. China, 1.5 billion, yeah. the same incidence of pelvic pain, they just don't have so. too many doctors there. I started to, to teach them, like go back to year 2000, now maybe there's some that they, they do. The culture, again, it goes with that group of patients that where did they make the pain worse because they are not able to control it yeah. because of the brain and the other group of patients that they don't bother them until they hurt to the very end and they hurt, then they show up. So pain is the expression of the symptom of the patient. So it's your contention that you can kind of talk your way out of the pain? Is that what you're telling me or, or lessen it or did I catch that? Um, you cope with it and it doesn't affect your day-to-day -day activity. Correct. And some without much coping mechanism that would make this problem worse. And they both have pain. So yeah. the one that they cope with it, you don't see it from the outside. The one that don't cope with it, they'll just complain, oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Okay. China, mm -hmm. India, we have a lot of prescription drugs coming from those countries. Okay. They're not being shared in those countries. Is that true or sharing well i mean they're not using maybe using them i i, I don't didn't really probably say that right um, but i understand that india's population is about to take over uh and, and rise above chinese um the medication i do know that the psychi psychiatric medicine is not something <coughs> that is so easily available in china for whatever reason and uh, when i first got there and say these are the medication i use uh, for pain, like amitriptyline, mm -hmm. low dose, and they couldn't find them. And wow. so after oh. maybe 10 years now, they can get them. They have to go to a different department to get those things. So there's a little bit of restriction that I don't understand. To go hmm. back to your, your acupuncture, I do endorse it, but it's better off find out what happened before you go block the pain. Sure. Right. Okay. okay, doctor. Dr. Maurice Chung, director of Mercy Mercy Center of Endometriosis, Pelvic Pain, and Urogynecology. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to our sponsors, Mercy, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and, of course, technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. We thank you, listeners, for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week, and we'll see you right here next Friday. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.